Am I starting, sir? Am I starting, sir? 11 o'clock is over. Can we start now? Start. Sir, sir start. Hmm. Hmm. Sir, Very good morning, all of you. This is Dr. K. Shivraj, Chief Library, Manipal University, Jaipur. On behalf of the Central Library, Manipal University, Jaipur, I welcome all the participants and the resource person, Dr. Abhishek Sharmaji, Associate Professor and Director, Research, Manipal University, Jaipur. This is the fourth webinar series by the Central Library of Manipal University, Jaipur. The topic of the webinar is Paradigm Shift in Education System, Impact of Basic and Applied Research. And before going to that webinar, I would like to introduce our resource person, Dr. Abhishek Sharma. The Dr. Abhishek Sharma has received his B.Tech from Malvia National Institute of Technology, Jaipur, India in 2007. He has gained experience of oil and gas processing while working in Engineers India Limited in India from 2007 to 2010. He has completed his PhD from Curtin University, Australia in 2014. During PhD, he has contributed under Australian Research Council linkage project for the scale up of different thermochemical processes. Later, he joined as a research associate in Curtin University to work on Australia India Strategic Research Funding Grant challenge project for development of integrated technologies in collaboration with the University of Western Australia, Queensland University of Technology from Australian side and Indian Oil Corporation Limited, the Energy Research Institute from Indian side. With that, he was engaged in teaching and developing chemical and petroleum engineering courses in Curtin University. He had provided technical consultation to St. Gobain, India for optimizing the production of BOP from gypsum and to price waterhouse coopers for estimating the diesel losses from storage tanks in mining sites of Western Australia. After that, he joined Chemical Engineering Department of Manipal University, Jaipur as Associate Professor and Founder Head. He is engaged in applied research with the participation of government and industries on areas related to waste valorization, multi-scale modeling and process design and development. Now I call upon Dr. Abhishek Sharma to present his presentation. Please, Abhishek Sri. Okay, thank you Dr. Shivraj for uh, the introduction. Are you able to hear me clearly? Yes, sir, yes. Okay, so good morning to everyone. Uh, it's being mentioned that the, today's talk gonna be focusing on uh, this paradigm shift in education system and uh, particularly the focus of uh, uh, basic and applied research uh, in uh, the current education system. Are you able to see the slides? Why is slide is not good. Oh, okay. The slides are visible, Dr. Shivraj. Yes. Sir, sir, just a minute, just a minute. Yes, sir, visible now. Okay. So the education system slide that is right now visible to or to everyone. I just want to confirm it. So sometimes what happens, there is some lag. Visible, visible, sir. Sir, visible, sir, now. Great, great. Yes. So uh, as I was uh, saying about education system, that uh, for any system, system constitutes of different components. Same is with any education system. Uh, education system needs teaching and learning, pedagogy development. Uh, then your multi-level, or you can say uh, different level of learnings, starting from preschool to primary, and then to secondary, and then colleges and universities. Uh, also the skill development that's very critical because uh, we need to develop uh, different kind of skills in our students such as communication skills it skills analytical skills uh, as well as life skills and at the same time that you know the teaching of uh, the curriculum in the right way is very important for the students for that the teachers training is also very uh, critical component uh, of today's education system then knowledge development as well as the technology introduction for that purpose, for learning purpose. So all these constitutes your education uh, in totality. Definitely there are different levels as I mentioned. So uh, here we are going to focusing more, more on the uh, university level education and the uh, relevance of then research over there. Because in today's time uh, and in a uh, few of my previous sessions, I mentioned that uh, research and uh, innovation is a very critical component of education and it is uh, go hand in hand with that. Now uh, for the university education or for higher education, you know, uh, some of the major points on which we have to focus is choice based grade systems, then curriculum and content development on a regular basis. 
Then ICT uh, introduction or tools usage in learning and strengthening the infrastructure of any university or organization. E-library access, teachers training and capacity building on a regular basis as I mentioned that is very important. Teachers training is also important so that they can give the right information to their students in the right using the right platforms and with their own updated knowledge. Then on demand examination and credible assessment system that is very important on demand, you know, as per the requirement of students, because now the world is shifting. We have seen the dynamic uh, situation in the world. So as per to that, we have to change our examination system as well. Then one of the most important component, which uh, we'll discuss in detail in upcoming slides is focus on research and innovation in each and every semester. In fact, you know, this kind of introduction is already uh, required uh, in your uh, school system as well, which I always uh, highlight that even in schools, research and innovation should be a very important component and innovator should be rewarded as well in the school system, as well as there has to have some internship for those students in the school system, the way we are having in the university systems. Industry interaction from first semester itself is very uh, relevant. Uh, you can't avoid this kind of interaction because we are always talk about the academy in, uh, and industry interaction, you know, when you're talking about higher education. Then placement tie ups. We have to work in tandem with the uh, industries, with our different agencies, so that our students will get placed, you know, in the right place where they actually want, want to go, uh, you know, as per to their own strengths. And then promoting student startups. That is again a very important feature of education system because in today's time we are going towards building the entrepreneurship skills as well in our uh, students. And for that, we have to focus on startups as well. Am I audible clearly, Dr. Shivraj? No issues? Uh, I think you are on mute. I'm not able to hear you. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Audible. Fine. If there are any issues, you can just uh, stop me yes, in, in between. Yes, okay. sir. I'll be telling. Oh, thank you. So now about industry academy gap. We always say that we need the industry interaction and in like, you know, the placement for placement purposes, for internship purposes, we have to work with industry, uh, you know, at higher education level. Uh, but there's still a gap, you know, when a student is uh, coming out from uh, any academic organization, uh, especially I'm talking about the university or the college high, uh, where we have the higher degree programs. Uh, they always look towards uh, some industry uh, opportunity, you know, uh, some placement opportunity or some work which they can do with industry. Uh, definitely they have some other intentions of going for higher studies as well, maybe uh, PhD or some other kind of opportunity. But even at bachelor's level, uh, that is the uh, you can say the utmost requirement of any uh, student uh, that you know he should he or she should go in the industry but there's still a gap and what is that gap first of all we have to understand that and why you know it is affecting our education system as well so uh, as per to this uh, information you can see that you know uh, even it from secondary level class 9th and 10th and prior to that it's middle and primary which gives you some very basic information required for industry but that is not sufficient then level one actually starts from secondary from class 9th and 10th where the person or that student is ready to industry is ready for industry as an unskilled labor then when they go to higher secondary like class 11th and 12th as well as iti programs then they are somewhat relevant for semi-skilled labor or you can say that level two for which you need some training for a duration three to twelve months kind of training then they go for polytechnic kind of program, which is level three or level you can say of the skilled labor. Polytechnic programs, ITI programs, you know, they are kind of interconnected. After that, a student jumps to a graduation. Usually when, when you talk about the college level uh, education and the university level education, which is level four for the, I'm talking primarily about the Indian environment, but the same is applicable to uh, other, you can say uh, um, nations. Levels may vary here and there. So level four is primary level of professional labor, which is ingenious, which we prepare to uh, be a ready asset for the market for the uh, you can say our economy. And after that, you know, after that, if you want to gain some more knowledge, as I was mentioning about like, you know, high degree programs such as uh, masters or PhD programs. Then after that, that person is ready, you can say as a level five or you can say level of research and advanced skills that is R&D skills which is also required in any organization in today's time, which is usually like, you know, that is the most, you can say, uh, topmost, uh, you can say, uh, qualification a person can get 
after finishing the graduation program, graduation post graduation program. But are we uh, providing enough information to our students so that they are ready for that uh, industry or for any industry, uh, for example? No, there's a gap. There's an industry academy gap. What is that gap? You know, uh, is that we prepare our curriculum as per the need of the market. We always say that we have our program objectives, we have our program outcomes, we have our course outcomes, which we then map with each and every course and with uh, each semesters, right? But there's still a significant gap over there, which you might see that there's a gap identification tool also available between industry and academy needs, and that is being known, known as gap analysis uh, studies. So in that case, what needs to be done is like, you know, uh, data is being collected by faculty for their programs, you know, uh, when they have already mapped their COs and POs uh, based on the inputs from other universities, internet data collection, then they always use that information, uh, you know, to be given or take to take as well from the alumni as a feedback and also the industry feedback for that gap identification. And after that, they go for the department core committee meetings, institutional core committee meetings, and then again revamping the syllabus or the curriculum as per the need of the market. But is that sufficient in today's time? Uh, we know that there's a lot of uh, programs which are going on for like, you know, understanding the CEOs and POs and their mapping uh, with our existing education uh, system or the existing curriculum. But are they sufficient? I think something which is missing is the inculcating the, the habits of uh, doing proper research in your education system as well. What is the need of the market? At what time we have to bring some new curriculum? That is very important. The world is shifting as I started my, uh, my argument with. That world is shifting. Now to accommodate that kind of shift, how you have to do research, first of all, how you have to integrate it with your existing curriculum or existing uh, higher education system. Now for that purpose, let me just give you some of the brief information about the kind of research contribution to uh, academia or to this uh, higher education system. So research contribution is primarily uh, using two platforms or you can say uh, two systems or two mechanisms. One is the basic research. Other one is the applied research. So basic research has been mentioned being expands current knowledge of any particular system. Applied, no, applied research on the other hand solves particular life problems. Then basic research is primarily theoretical and exploratory in nature. On the other hand, practical and descriptive in nature is your applied research. Basic research has the wider scopes as compared to the more specific scope of the applied research. Basic research is very less associated with technology. On the other hand, applied research is totally, you can say, associated with advancement of technologies. Basic research on the other end, the advantage, the major advantage you can feel is the predicts the future phenomena. For example, like, you know, uh, the work on hydrates. I'll, I'm just uh, giving you one of the examples. Sloan has uh, worked on hydrates and which is right now is a very popular technology after 30 years of his fundamental research. So that has been taken forward now, you know, so they predict the future phenomena. On the other hand, the applied research creates solution on prevention for future problems only, which you can foresee, you know, the upcoming problems. The most important point is basic research is always curiosity driven. On the other hand, applied research is client driven as per the necessity of the industry or the market. Basic research does not have direct commercial objectives, but applied research has direct commercial objectives, which is very relevant again to go with a proper integration of basic and applied research. Basic research is very less connected with economy because again, what you are doing is you are working on a very fundamental scale. On the other hand, applied research is totally connected with economical pursuits because you are solving a client problem. You are solving an industrial problem for which ultimately the client will generate some money. And lastly, that basic research takes place in the sterile environment. On the other hand, applied research occurs in real world settings. So there is a huge gap also between basic and applied research. Both the kind of research are happening in the university environment or in any higher education system. But what is happening is it with respect to the view. So as being mentioned on the other side of the slide that, you know, uh, primarily one kind of view has been mentioned interdependent view. There is one independent view also in which basic research is working totally in a different way as compared to the applied research. Here I'm, I've shown one interdependent view, which is of you can say current focus since last one or two decades primarily. 
that you know there is some components which they are sharing but they still have that interdependency to certain extent otherwise they are working separately you know this is happening in any of the education system you know the, th the fundamental or the theoretical research is going all together in a different direction as compared to the applied research which should not be the case and that is i think the paradigm shift i am talking over here with respect to education system that needs to be changed so for that we have to integrate our knowledge properly and religiously so one of the best ways of integrating your knowledge based on the previous slide you know uh, the integrated view we have to look so as i was mentioning that as i just mentioned that basic or theoretical research has wider scope as compared to applied research so applied research practically lies in that complete view of basic or fundamental research that we need to understand and accordingly we have to see or foresee what is going to be coming in future you know what kind of problems will be facing i'll share one case study uh, the market needs uh, in the upcoming slides so we have to understand what is coming next what will happen next and as per to that you have to do the knowledge integration now one of the most common model which is available is a quadrant model it is also known as pastures quadrant model uh, books in uh, 1997 Douglas Co uh, Stokes as you can see over here like you know as per to this uh, information that there is a quest for fundamental understanding and consideration of its usage of the fundamental understanding so when there is a quest of fundamental understanding but there is no application of it that is pure basic research one of the example is the niels bohr bohr work who is an atomic physicist he has developed the bohr's model but that is pure basic research there is no application of it then there is like you know uh, one case when there is uh, no consideration of usage or no quest for fundamental understanding which is organizational taxonomies i won't go in the depth of it for uh, just for because of the paucity of time uh, that is also not that much critical at the moment for our discussion but on the other hand when there is no quest for fundamental understanding and there is just a need for the usage or for consideration of usage of that particular uh, information which is available with you that you want to apply straight away so that is being known as pure applied research most of the work of edison being done in that way edison's work is you can pure applied research there is no uh, basic research in that particular quadrant as you can see why it is being known as pastures uh, quadrant model because most of the pastures work is using the inspired basic research that is the pastures quadrant so we one of the uh, common term which you have heard even from you know from your childhood or you can say when you started your education is the pasteurization model as well in which the technique we are still using so there is one basis of it there is some basic understanding of that model which was being developed by pasture louis pasture and then it's been, it has been taken for application and currently we are using it in all our houses imagine the pasteurization model which you are which you use in the morning to boil your milk at certain temperatures that is being done industrially also at industrial so that gives you an understanding of why it is important and how you can actually distribute your activities uh, in different quadrants now as per to the need i'll just give you some more information so how uh, that you know the whole system works how the knowledge integration perceives in today's environment so you always start with basic research as i started my discussion with you know basic or or you can say your fundamental research and then you take it to the applied research at the university level only what we are what we actually assume in today's time that basic research goes separately to the uh, uh, research centers or our applied research goes separately for the commercialization but that is not the case both the researches go hand in hand at the university level only or you can say at the higher education level so we have to conduct the basic and applied research together in any organization to move forward with respect to like you know considering the fact that knowledge integration is very important at this stage because that will solve a lot of our industrial problems and that will solve uh, in fact that will solve a lot of uh, you can say the upcoming challenges for the nation as well i'll i'll take one one uh, very good example then technical prototyping can be done in research centers in today's time you can do some of the prototyping even at the university level as well but sometimes because of the restriction of resources you know the 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 financial support this kind of work been then taken to the research centers then the commercial prototyping is being usually being done with involvement of r&ds of different companies as well as contractual research organizations and the same then been converted to products or services which being 
taken by that R&D centers or that R&D organizations of different uh, industries to the as an ultimate product to the market for the end user. And then there comes the vendors in the market who are going to take your product to the market. So there is a complete hierarchy which you can see over here. And that needs to be followed uh, like, you know, very religiously, as I was saying, because without that, your education system won't survive. For any education system to survive, you have to understand the need of integration of knowledge. And for that purpose, like, you know, what needs to be done, I'll just discuss in detail in my upcoming slides, that how we can integrate it properly, like, you know, by understanding the need of the market. So before going uh, for that actual case study, let's give, I'll give you an, uh, one slide on Indian scenario about Indian economy and like, you know, what are the major industries which are available in uh, India? So as per the Indian economy scenario in today's time, uh, manufacturing uh, constitutes of around 18 percentage of Indian economy. Finance and property is also growing at a very faster pace uh, and like, you know, it's uh, touching 22 percentage. Other than manufacturing, the major sector is agriculture for us. We are an agricultural economy, which we have to understand and we have to take a stand also to bring a lot of changes in our agricultural economy. There's a huge need and that need actually is for the market for which higher education can contribute significantly. After that, one of the other prominent sector is tourism, transport and communications, uh, which constitutes around 19 percentage, but that is now going to be affected seeing the uh, COVID situation. Definitely tourism has been, uh, been affected significantly. That will affect other sectors as well, like for example, transport. Then some other relevant uh, sectors, or you can say contribution to economy is by construction sector. Then partly by utilities and mining and definitely government and military for which there's a lot of focus of uh, DRD and some other organizations. Now that constitutes a whole economy. What are the major industries on which you have to focus in today's time? Iron and steel. So top six industries uh, which I have shown over here, like you know, they are the primary industries on which India was focusing from the beginning. And then the last four came a little later in last two or three decades, or you can say last uh, uh, like you know, 30, 40 years primarily in which the focus of the government has shifted towards these industries as well. So iron steel, we are the one of the one of the 10th uh, in, in the 10 largest producer of iron steel in the world. And in spite of that, we actually import iron steel. So you can imagine our uh, domestic consumption textile industries. So synthetic as well as uh, like, you know, natural uh, fabric which we are producing is again. We are actually exporting a lot of our textiles to the uh, outside world. So imagine like, you know, there's a lot of need uh, like, you know, for improvement in that sector. Also, I'll give you one very good example in uh, my next slide. Then jute industry, sugar industry, sugar industry. We are one of the uh, in the top five producers of this commodity and it is contributing just like second largest contributor to our agroeconomy sugar. So we have to see what more we can do in the sugar like in a sector, how we can improve the efficiency of those systems, you know how we can take care of the waste products coming from that industry. So these kind of work needs to be done seeing the uh, like you know the current need of the market, the current focus of these uh, industries because they are the employment generation industries. Then cement and paper industry. They are also one of the top, uh, you can say, uh, industries who are giving employment, uh, you know, in the Indian uh, market. Then last four, which emerges, you know, in last 30, 40 years, as I mentioned to you, petrochemicals on which the government started focusing in last 40, 50 years. And we have started producing a lot of our own petrochemicals in last, like, you know, uh, these uh, few years, which are also actually exporting to the uh, outside market. Automobile industry, there's a lot of uh, now production of automobiles in India itself. And that is another sector on which you have to look like, you know, heavily because there's a lot of there's a lot of need to like, you know, uh, bring some new technologies or some new like, you know, for example, the uh, battery based vehicles. So that focus is, is shifting from this, you know, uh, your gasoline or diesel based vehicles to your uh, battery based vehicles. So there's a lot of focus on improving the efficiency of batteries. That's another area on which, you know, uh, a lot of work needs to be done. A lot of fundamental and upright research needs to be done in an education environment, in fact, so that we can work uh, hand in hand with the uh, existing industries. Information technology, a lot of work is already going on in India. Information technology is one of the largest sectors, uh, I think, uh, in today's time uh, is generating employment in India 
as well as the people who are working in India delivering services uh, outside India. And then banking and insurance, which has emerged as one of the prominent sectors with uh, uh, like you know, new uh, banks coming into uh, like you know existence as well as uh, new policies for insurance. So there are also idea regulations are there and new industries are uh, emerging. All these are giving you a lot of opportunities, but how we can connect in a proper way to those opportunities, to those industrial opportunities, that is very critical at this moment. I'll just take one example from the petrochemical sector. This sector uh, will connect it to the need of uh, basic and applied research, and then how it will affect the overall scenario, how that paradigm shift will happen in the education system. So that I'll discuss uh, briefly in my upcoming slides. Uh, prior to that, let's take that case study. First of all, understand how that chemical sector is contributing because chemical sector is very vast, is very wide, similar to other sectors as well, you know. But in chemical sector, uh, the other advantage is that we are producing a series of chemicals. So as you can see, the market size of chemical sector is around $178 billion in 1819. It is projected to reach to $304 billion by 2025. So you can imagine the scale. I'm, I'm only talking about the Indian scale right now, my friends. We ranks 14th in export and 8th in import of ph excluding pharmaceutical products globally. So we have a you can good stand in the international market. The demand expects to grow at around 9 percentage per annum over next five years. The international demand is changing as well as our domestic demand is changing. Our domestic consumption is increasing. Out of this, I think around 30, 40 percentage or maybe higher is your domestic consumption. Because we the, our uh, our economy is a developing economy. Our needs are changing, right? So our consumption is heavily dependent on our population. We currently employ the chemical sector employs around or more than two million people right now, and the number will increase in coming time, seeing the current situation. Because right now, what is happening that you know the government wants a lot of chemicals to be produced in the nation instead of importing it from other countries or like especially from China. If we have to become self-reliant in that case, we have to think logically. We have to think uh, like you know, uh, in a in a different way. And when I say we, I mean not only industry, also the higher education systems. We have to think differently for our uh, curriculum for our upcoming programs. As you can see, that we are on the third largest consumer of polymers. So polymer industry is booming, and fourth largest producer of agrochemicals, and sixth largest producer of chemicals in the world. So you can imagine our presence in the global world but where we have to bring that change. This information is available with us. What needs to be done next? So like you know from the industry side of you can say from the government side, this uh, petroleum chemical and petrochemical uh, centers or you can say plastic parks are also coming for chemical and petrochemical sectors. Different zones have been defined by the government and industry are working in, the, in those uh, spaces now. So dedicated spaces are there to improve or to bring new reforms in this particular sector. Now, as you can see, we produce primarily three kind of chemicals, basic chemicals, which are your polymers and some inorganic chemicals like soda ash, caustic soda, fertilizers, which is uh, one of the uh, common requirement in agricultural industry. Then specialty chemicals, paints, textile chemicals, dyes, for example. Mm -hmm. We are producing 16 percentage of dye consumption in the world. So you can imagine our con the industry and that is one of the specialty chemicals uh, that contribution around 21 percentage in our own uh, economy our chemical uh, sector economy and knowledge chemicals contribute around 31 percentage which are primarily your pharma based products on which you are working biotech and agrochemicals other agrochemicals which you are so seeing this thing now what is happening i'll tell you now there's a shift because there's a the demand is changing in the market what is happening to most of the economies now that the demand for specialty chemicals, which is particularly this one, is changing. The need is increasing because the individual's need is changing. Now, for example, we are looking more like you know environmentally friendly products or green products. As per to that, we have to produce something new. We have to produce some new products, you know, which will be then uh, taken by those uh, individuals or by that uh, like you know consumer basis. Now, for that purpose. What needs to be done? That is important. That is, I have given you an uh, industrial scenario. These are some of the chemicals you can say specialty chemicals being produced around the globe. So, for example, specialty polymers, construction chemicals, industrial cleaners, electronic chemicals, surfactants, 
flavors and fragrances, specialty coatings, catalysts, uh, printing inks, feed additives, you know, water management chemicals, lubricating oil additives, different chemicals. Out of this, around 67 percentage is contributed by specialty polymers, construction chemicals, INI, cleaners, electronic chemicals, flavors and fragrances. Remaining 33 percentage uh, are your inks and like you know, feed additives and plastic additives. But point over here is because the need of the market as well as of the international market is changing. China's is right now is, is like you know consuming around one third of these chemicals being produced globally. Out of that, after, after that, North America comes into picture, Europe comes into picture. So there is a huge demand in those economies, which currently being fulfilled by other countries, for example, maybe by China or some other nations. India has to now emerge over there. We can increase the production of these specialty chemicals not only for our domestic consumption but also for the consumption of international market so suppose if uh, some polymer based specialty polymer is being required maybe for the semiconductor devices currently you know most of that being produced in china uh, very limited amount is being uh, produced in india we can increase its production and for that there is a need there is a need to shift from crude oil to fuel because now uh, as we all know that you know uh, in upcoming times electric vehicles will come into picture as compared to your uh, diesel or gasoline or petrol based vehicles because uh, we want to reduce the pollution for that purpose whatever crude oil we are generating you know whatever we are importing that needs to be taken towards chemicals and one of the the, the you can say uh, need of the market is the specialty chemicals so for that for that shift to happen I won't go too much in the depth of uh, the economies now because that is just for basic understanding. But what needs to be done at the university level? So as you can see, all these chemicals which are being produced right in different parts, they are produced at a bad scale because as I mentioned to you, the need is changing very fast. There's a lot of dynamics involved. So when the need is changing, what is happening that you have to shift to some new other chemical then and for that you can't go for very large scale production of one chemical. You have to go for batch wise production, small production of each chemical. I'm just giving a very basic understanding. I won't go in the depth of it uh, again because of the restriction of time and just seeing the diverse audience. So for production of those chemicals, I think you have to think now in one direction that I'm saying not only from the industrial perspective, because for industry, there's a lot of focus right now on MSMEs from the government side as well as on the industry side that, you know, a lot of new micro and medium scale enterprises are coming which are producing these kind of chemicals. But for that, for knowledge generation or for knowledge integration, university has to then go a step ahead, have to join hands with those industries, have to contribute that knowledge, that basic understanding as well as that we have to conduct that basic and applied research at that particular level, which is going to be useful for those industries in the coming times. Now for that purpose, like you know, uh, that paradigm shift which I was talking with you, that needs to happen in all the education system or particularly in all the, you can say, departments or engineering departments or sciences or like social science or any other departments which are focusing on higher education. Because right now we just need to prepare. We don't, uh, like, you know, right now what we are doing is we are just preparing our students, saying that you know, they are ready for the market, but that is not happening. Sometimes by the time they join the industry, the demand of that industry has already changed. We have to prepare our student in a way that, you know, they are ready for that those diversified conditions in the market as well as for that for understanding the dynamics of that market. And for that purpose, we have to teach properly. So there's a lot of uh, need to improve our own teaching environment. So I'll just give you in, in the same direction, I'll give you one uh, example of paradigm shift which I'm talking with you. So earlier what was happening that you know uh, most of the process engineering which is being done which you can say one of the extension of chemical engineering only though but uh, it is uh, primarily being done for process design and development. Most of that is just happening for business to business chemicals earlier but now what has happened that there's a shift from process design for B2B, which is business to business chemicals to product and process design for business to consumer products, need based products. For that purpose, as you can see, there are like, you know, uh, there's a need for different product design methods which are required for different chemical product types. 
one method won't work so if we are teaching just one method to our student that won't be sufficient in today's time there's a technology support we can use those computer aided teaching tools or you can say computer aided methods for teaching different kind of product design methods to our students which can be required for different product chemical product types because when you change the chemical product type the whole method changes sometimes to accommodate that our teaching skills need to be improved as well at the same time for that we have to look for the multi scale and multi disciplinary approach which is required for chemical product design only so when i said that there is a need for multi scaling we are talking from scale of atom or from the molecular scale to the site scale so that scale change you know from angstrom level to that uh, like you know uh, scale of kilometers your time scale will also vary accordingly so we have to accommodate all the scales in our own studies uh, in the education system also multidisciplinarity this is very important this is very critical as i repeated several times to my students as well in my lectures that multidisciplinary approach is very much important i can't work alone even for chemical product design there is a huge need of understanding the material sciences without material science or without uh, understanding of basics about chemistry or biosciences or even physics mathematics not possible also understanding the social sciences the need of the community that is changing so everything needs to be accommodated in your product design studies and for that purpose our programs our this curriculum needs to be changed to include multidisciplinarity you already have uh, some kind of open electives and like you know as well as some specialized programs in which the focus is on like you know introducing multidisciplinarity but that is not sufficient i'll give you just this uh, one uh, drivers you know as you can see there are four drivers so academia and industry is like you know you can say two prominent drivers for bringing that paradigm shift with it also activity in the people who going to be accommodating those kind of uh, like you know request that need so teaching skills we have to give like you know new chemical in your job profile needs to be uh, available for our own students so that information should be given in through your programs also multidisciplinarity as i just mentioned to you then soft skills are very important without that your student is not ready for the market that gap is still lying when i say that you know uh, it skills are important analytical skills are important at the same time soft skills are very important what happens sometimes a student is having a lot of knowledge but he or she is not ready for the industry and that always you get as the input from industry that you know uh, maybe a person is not ready for the market because he or she is not able to convey the information properly so that needs to be brought in your own programs then performance materials what are those performance materials which will improve your teaching skills then for industry point of view some of the training programs like you know cross functional trains uh, lifelong learning and globalization all these aspects you know should be brought in your training programs you know which industry gives to your students so these are these are one of the prominent drivers then research as i was saying that research job like you know is a very critical component of your education system a very critical component of your academia so it's on the activity side so for example for any new product to come in the market a lot of modeling needs to be done multi scale modeling needs to be done for which you know uh, the focus or like the contribution is not only from the chemical engineering side but from other engineering for example mechanical engineering electrical engineering instrumentation engineering computer science because we share a lot of boundaries through multidisciplinary approach then integration with material science as i told you for getting those structured products that integration is very important with material sciences new manufacturing paradigms what are those paradigms which are changing as i just mentioned to you in the chemical sector specialty chemical is getting a boom now so our economy is now shifting our chemical based economy chemical sector economy is now shifting towards specialty chemicals now for that you have to change our, like we have to change our teaching programs as well because earlier we are talking more about crude oil and like you know your petrochemicals to a certain extent and then just uh, focusing on the refinery and exploration but with that now we have to focus on some programs dedicated for like you know for example uh, fine chemicals or uh, specialty chemicals and for that you have to bring that research component into discussion that is very important then innovation or new product development that is another driver on the industry side that is another activity which is lying so enabling technologies what are those new technologies which we have to enable life cycle management branding complex supply chains market differentiation everything being is a you can say is a contributing factor for new innovation 
without new innovation because what we are doing is research right but when you have to integrate it with innovation industry has to come into picture because we have to work at different scales as i just uh, mentioned to you in my previous slide that you start from applied and basic research and then you move towards getting that product to the market to the end user and for that industry has to chip in with the you know but understanding the supply chain so for these chemicals only like in you know, specialty chemicals the supply chain would be different as compared to uh, your previous uh, like you know chemical based economy now to incorporate that that is one of the significant driver and to incorporate that industry also has to work in tandem with academia and for that i'll just share one more like you know information with you so for example for product design and engineering so we are moving from or that shift paradigm shift is happening from only from process engineering which is for uh, like you know process design for b2b kind of products business to business for business to consumer based products we have to go toward product design and engineering for which we have to on the one hand you have to understand the customer needs and the new technologies for that industry will also participate from one side then there is a lot of focus on the education system so chemical product pyramid which you have to understand what is going on in your current education system and what needs to be changed and then you have to integrate it with the multifaceted approach so as i told you multidisciplinary and multi scale approach which you have to use in our education system and then you have to integrate it with you know chemical product and process design properly which then give you that ultimate product in the market which is the current need of the market so if suppose the customer need change then what will change like you know accordingly the product will change you can work in the same fashion like you know the product design and engineering approach will remain same which will also contribute to improve your education system suppose if new technologies are emerging some green technologies accordingly you can adapt those technologies in your study programs for bringing that new chemical product to the market so as i was just repeating it that there is a need for academia to work with industry the need is coming from the market first of all and for that purpose it's a two way i always say that you know it's a two way street oh, industry has to come industry has to like you know uh, shake hands with academia has to like you know uh, you know that kind of faith should be built between academia and industry that is very important once that is there then you have to contribute for that basic and applied research to that platform and that you don't have to do separately that you have to bring in your existing curriculum as well and you know uh, we always discuss that uh, you know in in our organization that you know this change needs to be brought so usually those kind of discussions happen in industry but not in academy in detail we always do curriculum revamp uh, content uh, upgradation these things do happen but we now have to join hands with industry we have to bring them on our platform that what is your need tell us and then accordingly we'll revamp our curriculum because what you are teaching sometime it is 40 or 50 years old those old technologies we are teaching which are not at all required by those industry or even for anyone uh, like you know uh, in the in the world what is the need fundamental knowledge is very important as i was saying to you because applied research is part of fundamental uh, research fundamental knowledge is also very critical so when i say that chemical engineering i have to give all the fundamental knowledge or the fundamental information to my students but at the same time i have to prepare them for the current needs of the market so with that i'll just uh, like you know uh, finish my talk these are the references uh, which i have used thank you very much for listening to me and if you have any questions or anything to discuss we can talk yes sir yes, uh, 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 dr rabishek sharma ji we have many yeah, questions and then uh, uh, i've taken uh, three to four questions only sir then okay. the first question is that why we are not giving more importance to basic research your ideas please i think uh, more importance to basic research right i think it's a very valid question uh, which is coming uh, from any student or maybe from any i don't know it's coming from industry or from a student uh, the point is that basic research is getting importance if you going to see in the sciences it is getting that important the problem lies that it is not integrated properly with the applied research so whatever you are doing you are just doing in your shell in your own cocoon that you know this is a work which you have conducted okay fair enough but is that information necessary or is being required by someone in the industry that we are not seeing 
so whatever fundamental knowledge you are having through your basic research programs so i'll just give you one one common example you know whatever basic research you are doing in a uh, in a test tube or in a, in a small beaker is not sufficient to scale up that particular process or that particular reaction because the whole hydrodynamics change so to accommodate that you have to work with the researchers in the applied domain you have to work with that it's not like that basic research is not important without basic research applied research can't survive as i just shown you applied research is one of the components of basic research only whatever we are doing right now in basic research will be reflected in 10 or 15 years down the line but the mode or that conduit is through applied research only whatever you are doing is not sufficient for an any industry to scale up that process or to bring that product into the market using just that much information so i hope that i have clarified your uh, particular doubt yes sir the the second and the final question i'll be asking how how we can make applied research model as a major part of student centric learning model yeah i think that's a very good question um, someone has asked it so i'm happy i always think in that direction that you know how we can bring it because our curriculum is so vast sometimes you feel that you have to uh, maintain so many regulations also you have to follow those regulations uh, like for example ugc and uh, different regulation that this program should be there that program should be there one of my or like in our understanding is that you know you have to bring some kind of projects to each and every course primarily some kind of uh, small project which is related to the industrial need or you can say that applied research which needs to be done you can't do a lot of research practically at the undergrad level because of the time limitation most of this applied research is being done at like you know post graduation and that phd uh, level which i have shown you in one of the slides but even at the undergraduation level with your design projects you know with with your training programs when you are going to those industries you can have that kind of understanding what needs to be done and then some kind of small project can be integrated with that some research project dedicated research project can be floated as part of the curriculum that you know a two credit or some like you know a three credit course that for this particular product in the market this research needs to be done so that research for six months may not be sufficient because sometimes you need you know more than six months to do any kind of research but the knowledge which you will generate would be very important for the person who going to be working next to you so this way there is a whole hierarchy there is a whole pyramid approach over there so whatever you are generating at any level undergraduate level or maybe post graduate level will be used at the higher levels maybe by some phd scholars so this way you can work in tandem with those so what i have done in my lab i'll tell you a lot of my bachelors or phd this year uh, undergrad students are working with my uh, phd scholars just to gain understanding of uh, the kind of research happening in my labs so this kind of uh, integration is uh, very important okay sir thank you sir thank you dr abhishek sharma ji for your a very good informative lecture now i thank the resource person dr abhishek sharma ji and then the all the participants and mr vikas and then mr uh, dheeraj of central library of manipal university jaipur for their technical support thank you all once again thank you all thank you thank you thank you sir.